this week, ask all four of us questions. No wrestling. Tony Swish, Tony Swish wants to know. Maybe I should take a day off. What is the first video game you, All you remember did this seeing? weekend was take a day off. I've just taken several days off in a row. What are you through. talking about? Yeah. I literally didn't see you one time. No. <laughs> I'm not even sure that you went to Chicago. I can confirm I was I, there. I think that this is some I, gimmick that you pulled. I have a, a video, audio, and eyewitness testimony that I was, in fact, All there. All right. I'll but, take uh, for yeah, we, we actually never did cross paths. Mm. John Tab Somerville. Can you help Brian buy a decent pair of shoes? Oh, get out of here, John, you idiot. Or teach him how to find a proper meal when he goes out of town. You're a fool. P.S. Vinny and Bridget are king and queen of FRW, and Craig is the prime minister. <laughs> the prime minister? Not even the prime rib. <laughs> what are you? What are some of your favorite live sports events you've been to? All out 2021. That's a good answer. You have a dinner party. You can invite four guests, dead or alive. They can be from any time in history. Who do you oh, invite? Oh, God, we'll be here forever. Everyone name one person. My mother. All right. I will also say Granny's mother. And then there was Charlotte and Nikki. There was hair pulling. Check messes up on end table. Charlotte messes up on. <laughs> check messes up on end table? <laughs> Who's check? Nikki drops, kicks. A tornado off the apron. Whoa, what? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Shocking a tornado off the apron. <laughs> Undertaker versus Randy Orton and his cowboy Orton dad. Undertaker got Daddy Orton in the casket. Daddy Orton. Undertaker went to get Randy, but Daddy Orton came out of the casket. John Mosley versus Joey Janela. Now, was this the kid from the Jungle Book? I presume I presume <laughs> Mosley won. That's, that's Mowgli, Craig. Oh, my bad. Lucha Brothers versus the Young Bucks inside a steel cage for the tag team titles. Best cage match of all time. It's a, Sure. This match had every possible handicap for a Lucha Brothers versus Young Bucks match. You can't fly to the outside. You can't do yep. any dives. Can't do a hot tag. You can't do heat. You can't do a hot tag. Yep. It's literally a 22-minute tornado match. Where they agreed to only do one thing off the top of the cage. Yeah. No interference, thank God. I mean, when you think about the handicaps that they faced in this match, and then you think about the quality of this match, it is it is even more incredible than it is just watching it. Maybe the greatest cage match of all time. Maybe the best match of any kind of 2021. For God's sake, if you have not watched this match, go watch it immediately. Let's think about how many dream matches that we've got right now. How many potential never-before-seen fantastic matches we have by adding CM Punk, Adam Cole, and Brian Danielson to the entire AEW roster? Like, there's like 200 of them. <laughs> All right, the AEW show on Wednesday night. Did well, I heard. 1.32 million viewers, which was actually better than I thought it was going to do. I guess I wasn't paid enough. 18 to 49 demo. Dynamite did a 0.52 rating. And obviously the big story. It was a horrible whistle, bro. I don't even try again. That's a much better whistle. Thank you for whistling for me. He thanks Darby, staying the fans. Didn't know if he'd have it back in him. But as he put it, getting back into wrestling is like riding a violent bicycle. <laughs> Finally, Punk says, fine. Send out Ricky Starks. Send out Powerhouse Hobbs. Send out Hook. I'd be careful with that one, Punk. I don't want to mess with Hook. All four of you, he says, beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. Taz is gobsmacked that Punk has used his own line against him. This segment here with CM Punk was the second lowest rated thing on the entire show. Wow. All of these other segments on the show... That did 1.3 million, 1.4 million, 1.35 million, 1.3 million, all homegrown, so to speak, mm. regularly used AEW talent. But even without Danielson, Cole, and CM Punk, this show was still going to do 1.2, 1.25 million viewers. So I find that to be a good sign. Dan Lambert is a promo burying all the short, skinny dorks that Tony Khan man has signed. He's tired of the AEW fans, tired of hearing them sing the worst song ever, tired of hearing them chant AEW, AEW. 
All right, so I like this Dan Lambert and everything like that, but, I mean, as we've mentioned a thousand times in the last 24 hours, this did not need to be on the show. There was too much stuff on the show. This was not needed. They're in Cincinnati, so, of course, he begins to bury Cincinnati, bury Skyline Chili, the Cincinnati Reds, every single person who lives there, Aunt Linda in the crowd, 16 and pregnant next to her. Says, so I don't know if you know or not, but uh, uh, Pillman's daughter was pregnant. Okay. I shouldn't say was, although I, I actually it maybe was, because apparently she began getting contractions oh. and is going to have the child literally at any moment okay. after this angle. I love Jim Ross, but there is certainly a time when he is everyone's grumpiest grandpa. And he's talking about, I think it was uh, how it used to be if you made a tag, you had to make contact. In fact, but when I was a referee... 1970s, if you tagged someone, you had to make contact before you tag back out. I thought, Jim, that's 50 years ago. Well, then I think it was, uh, might have been Shivani or somebody just says, you were my grandmother's favorite referee. Tony Shivani interviews Tully Blanchard. Man, this was something else. Tully flat out called out Sting. He did. He didn't even like, you know, just threaten the guy. He said, one of these days, it's going to be you and me one more time. I do love Lee's comment here that Tully and Sting and whatever whatever match they end up doing has to lead to the debut of Ric Flair. You would think. Oh, man. You would think. They're not being subtle about that one. Rick's hanging out backstage, posting Twitter videos. <laughs> Adam Cole comes out, promptly begins to intimidate Tony, warn him to uh, not look the wrong way at his good friend Britt Baker. Don't get too close. And tells him to get out of the ring, you nerd. I'll slap those glasses off your face and I'll whip your ass. Tells this nerd to get out of the ring. Yeah, it's called him a nerd about four times. It was great every time. You ever met Adam Cole? I have not. The nicest fucking guy on the planet. <laughs> okay. And like every time I watch these segments, I'm like, how the fuck is such a nice guy such a great asshole? <laughs> He's such an asshole. As he is speaking, Danielson yanks the mic out of his hand. Says Omega knows that Danielson is better than him. He knows he is not at da uh, uh, Brian Danielson's level. And Omega can take no more. He attacks. Danielson quickly turns it into the yes lock, but the elite pounces. Giant brawl is going on. So, of course, I heard about this long before it happened because West Coast or whatever. And uh, people were very upset about uh, Suzuki's entrance being cut. And I don't know how to say this, but if you're upset, that's cool and all, but who gives a fuck? I wanted to see him wrestle longer. <laughs> if you like the goddamn song, listen, I don't think they should have cut off the song either, but if you really like the damn song, go get it on iTunes. I want to see these two fuckers beat the shit out of each other for a long fucking time. Then Moxie starts celebrating. Look at my watch. There's three minutes left. And he celebrates, and he celebrates. And he celebrates, and he celebrates, and he celebrates, and I'm like, why didn't you wrestle longer?